Congratulations on the victory, chosen as star of the match. Just how important was it to win the first game of this Euro? Obviously, it's the, it's the start of the Euro, it's the start of the game for us. It was very important to start with the win, with the three points. Uh, we saw the result as well uh, in the other end. And obviously, we play against Germany. Uh, everybody knows about Germany. Very, very good team. Um, they put us in trouble today. But um, now we were strong. We were strong and uh, we went and we, uh, we went to get this win very hard. In Group F, which is going to be very, very keenly contested. It's the first time that Germany have ever lost their opening game at the Euros. And what a horrible, scruffy own goal yeah. to lose it to, Ian. I think, yeah, you, you have to look at France. And France made some chances, but for some poor runs, maybe they could have released the ball a bit earlier. They could have had a couple more goals. But at the same time, when you look at the organisation on this throwing and how, how easy it was for France to breach them and, and score the goal and only lose by one goal, it, it's... It's, um, it's, 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 a, it's a shame, really, but in the end, I, I thought it was pretty comfortable from France. I thought they actually just let them have the ball more in the second half and just attacked them on the, on, on the break and should have scored more. Well, we're going to show people, actually, they could have won by three or four. The second one we're going to show is Rabiot back in favour. Actually, just with the wrong choice, doesn't get his head up early enough, Patrick, to square it. He, he, did, he didn't make the, the right decision at all. I think that is the, the small play with these three players was a good play. And I think when the ball has been played forward here through the, uh, the back five, I would say, from the German team, he should know that Chris Mann is, is there. Is there. Absolutely. But he didn't, he didn't look. His head was on the ball. And then he was too late, and that was a big, big chance for France. Never, you could see, he never lifts his head once, does he, Rabia? No, he never looked at, in control of the situation. Then his second touch, he was in trouble after that. So they did leave him off the hook on a number of occasions. But Germany hung in there, but just obviously no end product from them. No, absolutely. It was tough for Hummels to score the own goal, but his recovery run against Mbappe, who's probably the quickest person in the championship, actually was really impressive, wasn't it? Yeah, but he, he, well, he'd done well at the end of it, but yeah. it was a tough night for him. But yeah. again... And Papi can do that to a lot of defenders. And Hummel's never been the quickest, but he's had a tough night. But he's a top player, and he's never been the quickest, but he's been tested tonight, and he's stuck at it like all top players do. But again, here he got, what, would he have 10 yards in yeah. him? Wow. He, probably, he, he probably feared the worst, again, didn't he? a great he? lesson for a lot of defenders. He didn't give up. No. He didn't give up, and it, at the end of it, made a fantastic challenge. So all credit to him, but obviously a tough night for him. And there you go, you can see he gets his studs on the ball. You can see that the way the ball slightly spins, Patrick, that he does get enough on it, Hummels, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, he gets enough on it. I think he's, the first contact was with the ball. Yeah. So, of course, he was really close, but he didn't give up. He went to the end and he made the right uh, challenge and, uh, and he made a really good recovery. He really does. Ian, would you say as a centre forward you would have run across Hummels a little bit more? Well, that if he is going to do that, he is going to clean you out, when you're going to win a penalty and he's going to be off. Well, I think that what Kylian Mbappe done there was exactly what you should try and do. He tried to cut back in across, but he gave him such a head start and got so far past him. I think he's probably surprised that he's even there to challenge him in the first place. But what he done to come across is what you do. Yeah. But then what that did was gave Hummels a chance to, to get in there. Of course, it was a desperate challenge in the end, but he, he made the challenge. And then, and then Benzema thinks he scored on his return yes. to the international scene. But uh, VAR's been really impressive. The refereeing's been really impressive, and it was offside. Mm -hmm. is, is the pass just played a little bit too late? I think Pong, he doesn't get it out of his feet there in time. Yeah. He's just kind of like, he's, he's trying to find where the ball was. Just that fraction of a second. When you see him, he doesn't control it here properly. Look, now, now he's got it, and now he passes it, and they're still running forward. Maybe, you know, Benzema runs... A little bit, it, it just slows the run down a little bit, but you know, by then you're thinking that you're onside, you're just going, but now you can see he's blatantly offside. But that split second of Pogba trying to sort his feet out was enough to make him just wander offside. And um, you know, we spend brilliant attacking French players who obviously can win football matches, but again, another clean sheet from the last four cup, four clean sheets, and it'll be the defence that won them the title. Again, brilliant at the back. Are you quite quietly confident about what you've seen from France this evening? I think football-wise, they didn't maybe play, play their, uh, their best, best game. But they, were, they look solid. They look comfortable. So I think that is a really good start in that competition.
it sort of encapsulates a bit of a bitty first half, doesn't it? Yeah, I, th I thought Germany started, started pretty OK the first about 15 or 20 minutes. But again, shock and goal to give away. But you get the impression the French are playing at 50 or 60%. Mm. And I think there's a lot more to come from them. And they obviously look dangerous. But I'm enjoying the game. I think it's pr pretty good. Lots to pick out with the goal. None of, it, none of it very good from the German point of view, no. but there's a few things to look at. Look at it from the French point of view to start with, Ian. Yeah, from, 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 from the French point of view, they're just going into a situation where it's a throw-on. You know, it looks pretty comfortable for them. And when you look at it like this, it looks, oh, that's pretty, pretty easy. But once you see it, Pogba here, and he's, the quality of that ball, that's, that's not easy, the outside of the foot. And then Hummels gets his feet all, um, in, a, in a mess. But here, when you look at that, that's fine. You've got three French players there. You've got... For, for German players, it looks like it's OK. But once he passes this ball in here, you see Havertz has passed Pogba on to Goosens. Once this happens, there's the two holding midfielders. Hummels, just behind there, is, is in no man's land. Now Benzema's free because I don't know what Tony Rudiger's doing and what, who he's marking. Lays it back and then once it gets into it, it's like a domino effect of things that's going wrong. So much space for Hernandez over the back there, Fernandez over the back. Now, Humm now Hummels has got a problem worrying about Mbappe. The ball gets, he doesn't sort his feet out and bam, it's a goal. It's such an easy, poor goal to concede. There's just no, no organisation from Th Germany. There's a throw in the halfway line and there are seven German players within about 20 yards of the ball, all quite close to that touchline. Yeah, I think they wanted to put a pressure on the side of the ball because if you have numbers, you should have more chance of yeah. winning the ball. Obviously, there was a, a bad decision and one after the other. Yeah. Then we had Mbappe who makes some a really good run centrally. So we take Kimmich with him a little bit. So when Pogba go to the other side to find Hernandez, Kimmich was a little bit too far to stop the crosses. But it was a poor decision by Rudiger. But for so many players to be in the wrong position from the throne at this level, you know, there's, there's no excuse. And Rudiger's he should be minding his own business. Why he's getting drawn into that and chasing people. He's like childlike, you know, trying to chase the ball. You know, real, real poor goal. It did look like a, it, it did a bit look like a kids' game at one stage, didn't it? They're all rushing after the ball near the yeah, touchline. Yeah, but that's what, again. Something you said: the players, particularly defensively, almost mind your own business. It's just inside their own half. Step back, and for the two midfielders to be the wrong side, you know, it's criminal. It, it just when you when you look at it, it's, it, it, they just do not know what they're doing on that on that throwing at all. It's simple as that. They don't know what they're doing. Something but, else we need to have a look at it happened right on half time with Pogba and Rudiger. We've had a look at this a few times, and that's why Pogba reacted. We've seen it before with Luis Suarez. We've seen it in the World Cup, the Premier League. He did it in the Dutch League as well. Does he bite Pogba? Does he try and bite Pogba? What is he doing? <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't mean, know, I don't know what he's done there. No. When you see in a Pogba reaction, yeah. he felt <laughs> like a bite. So I don't really understand what he was trying to do there, Rodrigo. I think it was more of a, more of a nibble, wasn't it, than a bite? <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a proper bite, was it? But it was a silly, silly thing to do, yeah. obviously. Right underneath the, the, uh, the eye of the assistant uh, referee there. So, here we go. That's there. Yeah, yeah. yeah but he's now not Now, that's flinched. very hard for us to tell, whether yeah, there's any not, force yeah, in that he's, or whether he's if just he's resting. If he's bit him there, he's going to flinch. He's not flinched at all. He did. No. He's not flinched there. I don't know what's happened now. I can't see it. All, and Ian certainly likes the way that Mancini's dressed as well, yes. don't you? He's very smart. Also, tomorrow we're going to hear from Gareth Southgate as we edge towards England, Scotland on Friday night. Patrick and Roy will be joined by Gary Neville tomorrow. We may just find time in the show to reminisce about that incident in the tunnel at Highbury <laughs> back in 2005. <laughs> That's tomorrow, everybody. Tune in for that. Right, Germany didn't have a shot on target in that half, so the emphasis is on them, isn't it, to impose some structure on this game? Very tough situation for Germany. Now, they're a home German mentality. They'll have to obviously try and get back in the game, but counter-attack could be in big trouble. Yep. And Hello and welcome to the new transfer news video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about all the latest transfer news today. So the first news today is that Tottenham are looking to sign Lazio attacker Joaquin Correa. This news comes from Gazeta dello Sport. Correa has in, uh, attracted interest from other English clubs like Arsenal and West Ham. They were also tracking him, but 
Tottenham still have not come to any agreement with Lazio about his price tag. Lazio are looking for around 40 million for Correa, but Tottenham think he's valued around 20 million. So we'll see what will happen with this signing. So the second news is really interesting. According to Anfield Central, they claim that Liverpool are looking to hijack Manchester United's bid for Jadon Sancho. They have made a late inquiry about his situation and they might look to sign Jadon Sancho. So currently Manchester United have not come to an agreement on the price of Jadon Sancho. They are still stalling over the add-ons of his deal. So we'll see what happens. We think that Liverpool might be able to hijack this deal. I mean, if they could come up with the money, they can surely sign Jadon Sancho this summer. United have really made a mess of this transfer. They have been trying to sign him for the last 12 months, but still haven't come to an agreement. So maybe Liverpool could hijack this deal, which would be really interesting. So, okay, that's it today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel.